So far on this channel, I've talked about my experiences with the first two Danganronpa games, along with the first Danganronpa anime, all of which I've liked quite a lot. But today we're going to talk about the Ultra Despair Girls game, which is very different than any of the others. There's also the challenge of how do I review this without spoiling any of the others, which, yeah, that's not going to happen. In order to talk about this game at all, I will be spoiling the fact that a certain character lives to the end of the first Danganronpa game, though I will try to avoid any other spoilers. Anyway, this game focuses on Kamaru Nayagi, the younger sister of Makoto from the first game. She has been captured by the Warriors of Hope and thrown into Toa City, where she must survive against the Warriors of Hope and their army of Monokumas. Kamaru is joined by Toko, and together they fight the Monokumas while also learning more about the city, its residents, and each other. The gameplay here is nothing like the other Danganronpa games. The other games are basically visual novels with some gameplay during the investigations and class trials. This one, though, is a third-person shooter, and I really did like this change. It made the game more exciting than just going to places and reading text. Though, to be honest, the shooting gameplay wasn't that good. It didn't feel as smooth as the other big shooters, and the boss battles in particular were annoying because it was often hard to keep an eye on the enemy while also dodging the attacks. This was especially true for the final boss battle, where I couldn't even move how I wanted to because of the way the camera kept focusing on the boss that time. Though maybe I did something wrong with the camera settings, or it was because I was playing on my PC, but whatever the case, this was really frustrating. Despite its flaws, the gameplay worked out pretty well. The game isn't made to be super hard, so the lack of smooth gameplay didn't hurt it that badly. And I also like that they just did something different here, since that let the game do a lot more story-wise that would otherwise not work. The world of Danganronpa is very fascinating, but the killing games fo narrow the focus so much that you don't get to see that much of the world. In Ultra Despair Girls, we see a lot more of the world and flesh out a lot of the background events from the other games. The story here I really like. There's a mix of the mysteries about what's going on in the characters' skulls, and then you have Atoa and Kamara just trying to survive here. The most interesting thing about the story were the motivations behind the Warriors of Hope. They are the villains of this game, but they are kids who want to turn the city into a children's paradise by killing all the adults. Yeah, this is definitely the darkest game in the series so far. What I like about the Warriors of Hope is that their actions are sort of justified by their background. And while many of the actions they take are extreme, there's definitely a core logic behind them applicable to the real world, which is very interesting. I also like a lot of the side characters introduced as well, especially the ones that have a connection to the characters we've known previously. Though it's definitely not a happy time for all the characters, that's definitely for sure. I also like how they twist on the ideas of hope that Danganronpa is known for, and just show that hope can also be very dangerous when taken too far. The darker storytelling at times did feel a bit overly edgy, especially like when you have a dark moment combined with a comedic moment or the cartoonish style, but for the most part I enjoyed it. The cartoonish style also took some of the edge off the story, which I think was really needed, so it wasn't taken too seriously, even if it is like telling a serious story. And I also really liked what they did with Toko's here in the story. She was my least favorite of the survivors from the first game, and there I found her more annoying than anything. Here though, she got enough time to really shine, showing how she grows as a person from the first game, is able to help Kamaru along, and also grow herself throughout this as she developed a friendship with Kamaru here. So yeah, overall a solid game. I did not like it as much as the other two Danganronpa games I've played, but I appreciated what it added to the series as a whole. For those wondering how this fits into the series as a whole, you should play this after you have played uh, Trigger Happy Havoc and Good by Despair. And then you should play it before you watch the Danganronpa 3 anime, though I don't think it's fully required, but if you're going to play it sometime, play it before you watch the anime. Chronologically, this takes place before Goodbye Despair, but there are some things that take place there that they expect you to know about to like, frame the context of this one. Especially that one character who I liked quite a lot here, though I don't want to get into spoilers. And now that I have finished it, I'm going to go watch Danganronpa 3. Expect a review for that as well at some point. I'm also interested in doing a more detailed breakdown of this game, including all the spoilers because this is a kind of short video because I can't really talk about that much. Either way, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want more Danganronpa content, and I will talk to you next time.